with our front bench here this evening, former BC Premier Christy Clark. She's now a senior advisor with Bennett Jones, CTV News political analyst and former Toronto Mayor John Tory is here, as is CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair. Hello, everybody. Very nice to see you. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom I'll, I'll start with you. I thought it was interesting that this letter happened just days after this big trip to the U.S. to try and reemphasize how close the ties between our two countries are. Does this matter against that backdrop, this letter? It matters a great deal. Um, first of all, I think Trudeau was completely right to start laying the groundwork for a better relationship and making people in different states understand that we are the biggest trading partner that the United States has, and more often than not, the biggest trading partner of their individual states. So that's that's good, useful work. But you know, Vashi, I'll share that in our line of work, you, you wind up talking to a bunch of people and people ask to meet you. And I was surprised by the forthrightness of the position that a very senior American diplomat shared with me. And it was not somebody from a background that was anything opposed to Canada and not, you know, not somebody with, a, with an axe to grind, but it was simply putting out facts about the lack of preparedness, the lack of supply, the lack of depth, the inability to do more than put a few thousand people into the fray if ever it came to that. And he just said, you know, with your proud military history, I'm so surprised that Canada is letting down the side the way it is. And it was clear, it was not partisan, and it was something you had to take to heart because the Americans are paying attention to this. So this is not somebody doing Trump's bidding. This is a group of American senators saying, what's happened? You know, how come you're, you're not pulling your share, your fair share of the load, and I think that uh, that's something that Canadians should be paying attention to a lot more. Yeah, truly a bipartisan group, Christy, and also included in that group many senators who have a close relationship with Canada. I was mentioning earlier on the show Senator Chris mm -hmm. Coons, a huge advocate for issues around foreign policy that, that we face. Um, Senator Joe Manchin, who made a trip to Alberta, uh, if I remember correctly, a few years ago to help try and spur um, you know the relationship around energy. Uh, do you think that this matters politically? Oh, yeah, I think it matters a lot. I mean, there's no doubt our two economies are integrated and free trade benefits the Americans uh, just as much as it, it benefits us. Well, probably not just as much. And that's the thing is that, you know, they are the big partner and we are the little partner. And when you're the little partner, you always have a much bigger investment in trade than the other bit partner does. I mean, some of our provinces ship, you, like, get... I think over 95% of their trade goes to the United States. Imagine if the Americans decided, because they didn't think we were living up to our obligations, which we are not on the international stage, that they wanted to shut down trade from some provinces. When I was the Premier of British Columbia, we were proud that we got our trade down to 49% with the United States, which is a record, I think, in, in Canada. We are all incredibly dependent on them, and we can't stand around and just say, well, they benefit, we benefit. Uh-uh. We benefit a lot more than they do. And I can tell you, you know, while Americans are spending a huge amount of their government's money, their taxpayers' money on defense, Canadians are spending all that defense money on health care and education. So, you know, we've been really getting a free ride for a long time. And I don't think it's unreasonable for our American neighbors to say, you know what? The free ride's over. We expect you to, we don't expect you to spend what we're spending, they're saying. 2%, you promised you'd do it. Live up to your promise. I think the counter from the federal government, and, and we were referencing this earlier, uh, John, was from the defense minister who even openly spoke about how hard it was to convince his cabinet colleagues to go along with the plan to get to 1.7%, which is markedly higher than it, than it was, for example, a, a decade ago. It just seems to be that the vulnerability is around not laying out the plan to get just a bit beyond that to 2%, because that's what the senators kind of made clear in the letter. That's what we expect when that meeting happens in July, just a plan because to get there, because Canada right now is the only country who doesn't have one. Well, let me start with a deal is a deal. And I think we signed on to the 2% along with a whole bunch of other countries. And it isn't just U.S. senators or Donald Trump or anybody else uh, uh, speaking about this. It's other countries in NATO have spoken about Canada. The Secretary General has spoken to Canada about this. But a deal's a deal. If we tried to sign up in any other partnership in life and said, well, we'll put in a dollar, and then later on we said, well, we, we're only just going to do 85 cents. Can't you take a joke? I mean, people would not, you know, would not take you seriously as a partner if you signed up and then said you're not doing it. And so what we need is a plan. And it does not have to be spent tomorrow. We need a plan. 
I think the political risk in this, beyond whatever the risk is with the uh, U.S. relationship, the political risk at home, which I know you were talking to some of the generals about earlier, I don't think is as high as people might think. I think Canadians would support the notion that we should look after our sovereignty in the north. Mm -hmm. I read that there are nuclear submarines up there from other countries that are plying the northern waters under the ice and so on. Well, we should be able to assert our sovereignty up there and a host of other things, including, as Tom said, being able to send uh, people, if required, to help out in the defense of democracy. That's what we're there to do. So I don't believe that uh, there is a political risk. I think Canadians actually would support this, and then they need to just have the plan that says we're going to get the rest of the way there. Why would you put out a plan that falls short by 0.3 percent of, of what we said we would do and signed on to do? It just doesn't make sense. I think if you, if you play devil's advocate for a second, Tom, it's that they actually haven't been able to spend all of the money even that they had allocated, which already fell short, that maybe it's more realistic to say that they're only going to spend 1.7 percent. But to, to John's point, I mean, how difficult would it be to map out beyond that uh, how, how to get to 2 percent? I think where the domestic political risk calculation comes in, the interesting thing is maybe the calculations change with Canadians, but they're not getting it very hard from the opposition. The Conservatives have broadly said, yes, right. it's something we would you know, hope to meet, they have not laid out any distinct marker by which they would do that or if they would do it much faster or how they would do it. They don't talk about issues around defense, even close to the amount they're talking about issues we know are resonating with voters like affordability. Well said. You're right. And it's, it's well spotted by you that Poiliev has skirted around this issue, never come out clearly saying we're going to respect the 2 percent. And I guess it's going to, because it's very hard, one, to actually spend the money, as you just mentioned, but two, to find the money if you've got other priorities that you're going to be coming into government with. But I don't think we've got a choice. And we're not very good at procurement. I think that we have to make that simple avowal. I mean, when you look at the, sh the coastal ships that we're building right now, there was so much water accumulating on the decks. They said, oh, well, we found a, a solution for it. We're going to start making holes in the decks so that the water will run off. You don't think somebody could have thought about that in advance? I mean, we're at the stage now. Talk about protecting the Arctic. We've got nothing. And whether it's the the aircraft that we're buying, finally uh, going to you know modernize our, our fleet of, of fighter aircraft, but I mean, they're still well short of the numbers that we would need to cover the second largest country in the world, which is Canada. We're the only country that fronts on three oceans, and we've got nothing, not not even for our own territory, for our own interests, never mind those, as you mentioned, uh, of our allies and, and neighbors. So I think that it's a scandalous situation, and it's not an argument to say, oh, you know, the reason we haven't been able to spend what we've already budgeted is because we're really lousy at this. I think the, the answer to that is you've got to pick up your game.